So this is what the news release looks like on CME group. As you can see, it has the days of the week as well as the dates. And then as you scroll down, you can see the different announcements that are going to take place during that date and time or the ones that has already taken place prior to. So uh, Monday, these are the announcements for Monday. Scroll down and look at them. And these are the announcements that will take place on tomorrow. And then the ones for Wednesday, the ones for Thursday, as well as the ones for Friday. Okay. And then investing, let me. So that was the CME group. Now I'm going to share with you what the investing.com news site looks like. Let's see. So can everyone see investing.com? Could you type a one in the chat box if you are able to see? Yes. Me? Okay, thank you. So this is the investing.com website. Once you get to the website, you can see all the information that is included on investing.com. If you click on economic calendar, it looks a tad bit different from the CME group website. It's just a matter of preference of, you know, which site you want to use to monitor the news. And on this one, it's, you know, it has the tabs for each day. So today will be highlighted once you log onto the page and then you scroll down and it also has the news by time. And one thing you can do is plan in advance. Uh, you can take a look at the following day. If you were planning to trade at a certain time and you find that there's a big announcements being made at that time, you want to plan around it, especially if it's one that will move the market. And you'll learn over time which ones sends the market into huge spikes up in or down. Okay, you can even look at the full week at a glance if you wanted to plan your trading cycles for the full week. And it's labeled by each day, as you can see. When you get in, we're going to get an opportunity to dive into these a little more, more in depth in just a minute. And it also includes the following week. So this gives you an opportunity to plan in advance. Okay, so the next one we want to look at. So that was the CME group that we've reviewed. Uh, we looked at investing.com. The next important thing is knowing the instrument that you trade, that's important. Like for me, I trade the NASDAQ. So I know the NASDAQ is very tech heavy. You also want to know like the biggest holdings uh, in your, the instrument that you are trading for several reasons. Because when you know the largest holdings of the instruments that you're trading, you want to keep an eye out for when they are releasing earnings. 
because then too, it can create, you know, huge spikes in the market, either a large spike up and or down, or it can just go up, down, up and down, up and down. So those are some things that you want to keep in eye out on. Let me show you what that looks like. So since I trade the NASDAQ at nasdaq.com, or you can Google whatever instrument you are going to or planning to trade and look at the holdings of that instrument. So you know the NASDAQ has like the top 100 uh, stocks included in it. And here, once I click here, I can click from smallest to largest or click market cap again and it will be from largest to smallest. So these are my big players in the NASDAQ 100, uh, Apple, Microsoft. Can anyone tell me what Alphabet is? Type in the chat box. What is Alphabet? Who knows? Google. <laughs> okay. And then there's Amazon and Tesla. So these are the top, uh, you know, Facebook. You're probably uh, familiar with NVIDIA as well. There's always a lot in the news about uh, NVIDIA. So these are my top players for the NASDAQ 100. So I always want to be familiar with when their earnings are being released because there's a possibility that uh, it could send the market into a large spike up and or a large spike down, okay? So that was the nasdaq.com. The next thing I'm going to share with you is earning whispers. If you are not familiar with earning whispers, it is a site that released the earnings that are taking place of each stock. It tells you uh, the time that the earnings are going to be released so that it allows you to plan around that time. Allow me to share that with you. Okay, so this is the Earnings Whispers website. Um, again, it's, it's really self-explanatory, very easy to understand. You know, it has the dates. It then also tells you the earnings that are going to be released on that date. So if you click on it, like Friday the, the 6th, so DraftKings, good year, in bridge and then if you look here it tells you the times that they are going to be uh, released so that you can plan around it i personally don't like to trade uh, when the earnings are taking place but i will trade uh, shortly thereafter and or before so rule of thumb it, it's just a matter of preference some people love to trade the earnings because of their strategy and setup works with uh, trading the earnings that's by design for them. But my preference is not to trade during earnings. Now, this is the website. A lot of people are very familiar with their, uh, their Twitter page. For Earnings Whisper on their Twitter page, they have this right here. so that you can see the earnings that are being released uh, on a single day. And then they'll have them all, all listed there. So as you can see on this one, Tuesday, May the 3rd, these are the companies that are releasing their earnings on that day. So you can follow this company either on Twitter, they also are on Instagram as well. So Twitter, uh, their Instagram, as well as the website itself, it all provides the same information. It's just a matter of the format and you know the social media site, which 
you prefer to go to to find the information on uh, the company's earnings. Okay, let's go back to the other. Slide. So definitely stay in the know, stay in the know, stay in the know, know about your company. You don't have to know about every single company, but definitely know the one in which you are investing in and or using as your investment vehicle. Now, let's do a check for understanding. I want you to uh, do the following. Type in the chat box two announcements that are taking place on Thursday, May 5th at 8.30 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. Also, well, let's start with that one. Uh, two announcements that are taking place May 5th at 8.30 a.m. And I can so you can go to CM Group and or investing.com to find that information. CM Group or investing.com to find that information. And then once you have it, type your answers in the chat box. Let's see who gets it first. I think we have topless claims, yes. And what else? Did you find any others for? Did anyone else find any other announcements? Non-farm activity. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so what I will do now, let's take a look at Good job. This is the CME groups site. So this is Thursday, May the 5th. We scroll down to 8:30. This is an 8.30, and this is also an 8.30, okay? Good job. So the next thing we are going to check for understanding on is how about two companies that are releasing earnings on Friday, May the 6th? Can you find two companies that are releasing earnings on May the 6th. And where would we find that information? At Earning Whispers, either their website, their Twitter, or their, their Instagram. So you will find information about earnings through one of the social media sites where Earning Whispers share their information. 
So find two companies that are releasing earnings on Friday, May the 6th. Good job, good job. Okay, good, good. And they are rolling in. Okay. DraftKings, good year. Yes. Yes, yes. Good, good. Okay, so everyone understands that. This is definitely the gifted class. This is the gifted class for, for sure. All right, so we have one more check for understanding. One more check for understanding. Can you tell me three of the top holdings of the NASDAQ? What's three of the top NASDAQ holdings? So remember, we would find that at nasdaq.com. And this is the same method that you would use to check for the you know, top holdings. Correct. Microsoft, Google, Apple, Apple, NVIDIA. Okay, so we totally, totally understand uh, fundamental analysis. Although it sounds as if it's some complicated task, this is what fundamental analysis is. Although there are, although there are several different um, methods that you can use to uh, find the news that's taking place, People use several different websites, but these are the ones that I like to personally use because they are straightforward, very easy to understand, and they always stay up to date. They haven't failed me as of yet. So these are the ones that I prefer. So let's take a look at earnings whispers for a few seconds. And these are in fact, the ones that are taking place on Friday, the 6th, Friday, May the 6th. Earnings whispers is really thorough and their sites are very easy to understand. Let's move on. Okay, so here is where some true application is going to take place. Based on your budget and the amount you plan to deposit and maintain in your brokerage account, we're going to kind of dissect that instrument for about you know two or three minutes to see what information we can find. I'll pull up another chart for you. So based on your budget, I want you to choose one of the products when I share this chart with you, and then we'll look for the top holdings in that product in which you are planning to trade. And this is futures products. So here we go. make it larger. I want you to look at this column right here. Let's see. Focus on this intraday margin because this tells you this tells you the amount that you are required to keep in your account at the specific time. Mind you, these amounts change and they could change you know, throughout the course of the day or once a day. This is today's chart. I'll show you the dates. This is today's margin. There's a desk designated specifically for maintaining these amounts. And 
they, they definitely change. When there's high volatility, you can just totally forget about these amounts, amounts right here. These are the amounts for right now. So looking at these products, uh, just think about the amount that you're planning to maintain in your account on a daily basis. And then I want you to choose one of these. Now, the minis and the micros, they will contain the same products. The difference, uh, say for instance, like the e-mini NASDAQ, that's what I trade, and then the micro NASDAQ, they contain the same holdings. It's just that this one, you can trade it with less money in your account, one tenth, but it also pays you less. So it takes you, you know, a tad bit more time to make the same amount of money. But in the same instance, you lose money. If you were on the losing side of a trade, you would lose money a lot slower as well. So just think about, consider everything being one tenth. And I will scroll down so that you can look at some of you know, the margins to kind of get an idea of what you would want to maintain in your account and the product that you would be able to trade based on that amount that you are planning to maintain in your account. The YM, uh, it travels, trades very closely to the NASDAQ. So oftentimes when there's high volatility and when the NASDAQ is priced out of reach, out of reach for uh, most people, they will trade the Dow Jones and the product code is YM. So keep that in mind. And then the micro Dow Jones is MYM. And these are the amounts that are required uh, for intraday margin to trade these. And then here are the bonds. A lot of people love trading the bonds because they are uh, very mellow and there isn't a lot of jerking around on the charts as there can be sometimes with the NASDAQ, it's like a smooth, really smooth trade. So a lot of people make a lot of money trading these, these bonds. Then here's future, uh, gold futures, E-mini, Copper. The energies, you know, the oils. Agriculture. So as you can see, there's plenty of opportunities for basically all budget sizes. It's just a matter now of learning the skill and being consistent and disciplined on a daily basis. Because once you learn this, I'm sorry. Uh, this is, I'm sorry. Uh, this is Marissa. I have a quick question about um, like deciding our margin because wouldn't the cost of the contract play a major factor? So I, I wouldn't know if I wanted to start off with 50 versus 500, depending on the cost of the contract. Well, okay. Now the cost of the contract is something different. Uh, this is what you are required to maintain in your account uh, through the day. Um, 
the cost of the contract is, let me, let me explain it. Okay. There are ticks and there are points. Mm -hmm. uh, like four ticks would equal one point. And all of these, it varies for every single one. Everyone has a different tick and point value. Whereas one point would be $50, then each tick is $12.50. So after you break down the amount that's required to have in your account, then you will look at the product itself for the ticks and point value. Okay, so what you're saying is, let's say I wanted to fund my account 500. Right. I, I would it's then not have the to price of a contract. No. Right. I would just have to maintain that 500 throughout the day. Correct. Yes. So then I would have. So I, would I have to then fund it over 500 so I can? I would personally uh, say, for instance, like this one requires uh, 500. The thing about it is you want to exercise discipline when trading. We're going to get into the technical analysis on yes, on sorry, on tomorrow, but I'll go ahead, I'm going to explain this uh, to you right now. When you are trading, you develop um, like your strategy. Say for instance, you decide I'm not going to lose any more than $60 today. And once you make that commitment to yourself, stick with it. Either use a hard stop or you can use a mental stop. But if your account is down $60, stop trading for the day. But with the contract, um, you'll find that the ticks are, you know, five to $10. And then with four ticks equaling a point, it could be 20 to, of course, some of them are a whole lot more, but that kind of gives you an idea of if you're down one point, down two point, down three points, then the amount of money that you can be down. And then if you're up one point, up two point, up three points, then th you know that's a certain amount of money that you can be up. So it, it goes both ways. But this is in terms of ticks with ticks totaling to points. So what you're looking at right now is not the price of a contract. That's just the amount to maintain in your account to allow you to trade the contracts. Did that answer your question? Okay, yes and no. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so my main question is because I want to be prepared for Thursday. Let's say I do want to fund uh, 500 because it has to be maintained throughout. Should I then, like, so how much should I fund it then? Should I put, how much more than 500 should I fund the brokerage account? See, anytime anyone asks me that, I will never, ever, never, never now, never, never tell anyone the amount to put into that your account. I will always show you this and then allow you to decide. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that will be totally on you. So you'll, you'll decide um, how much to fund your account as well as how much to trade. You will decide your own limits. That's one thing that's, that's personal because everyone knows your own budget, you know what you want to earn, you know what you are willing to lose. Those are some decisions that I cannot make for, for anyone. All right, because I don't want to start off too big and lose too much, which I don't right. intend to lose, but still. <laughs> exactly. I want to be very cautious can't, at the beginning. Okay. Can't right. say so. 
Yes. Can I ask? Okay. So if I understand her question correctly, she's asked, I think she's asking if she wants to fund her account for $500, would she be eligible to trade the e-mini S&P 500 futures if she only has 500 in her account? Is that what you're asking, Marissa? What does it say on there? That says... I, she she did kind of answer my question because what okay. I'm saying is let's say I do want to trade the E mini right S and P so that way I have to have the 500 but then right I I'm assuming I clearly have to fund it over 500 so I can then get the contracts because I don't but however much they cost so you have to put that amount plus the cost of whatever that, the contract exactly are. that's what I right that was my question right because I think we have to have a minimum of 500 in order to trade that. Okay. Yeah. Keep in mind, contracts don't cost five hundred. That is right. Right. Yeah. I, I'm thinking of maybe funding it two hundred dollars more than that. Okay. That's a good rule of thumb. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Keep in mind that these. This is not the price of the contract. That's just the amount that's required to be maintained in the account to trade that product, each of those products. Okay, any other questions on this one? I can also, I can, I'm gonna place a link to this in the chat box so that you have it, so that you can kind of determine. I have another question. Okay. So if we click on the more information link, mm -hmm. is that how we find out what is included in those futures? Okay, you, you have the link. I'm going to allow you to spend a few minutes tonight and go through all of it in detail. You know, spend as much time as you want to on this chart. Okay. Because ultimately what it's going to boil down to, you still going to be the one to decide how much to deposit into your account. I would not provide any information, any suggestions, any considerations or you know, any do's or any don'ts about how much you fund in your account. So I provided them. Can, can you suggest for a hypothetical person? <laughs> I will not. Mm -mm. I'm going to allow everyone to determine your own budget. You determine your budget. <laughs> and with that said, choose one of these. <laughs> we may go over a few minutes tonight if it's okay, because we are um running close to the time so can you just choose one choose one of these from this section that you plan to trade and then find um find like your top five holdings in that product take about one to two minutes to do that so choose one of these products and find the top five holdings of that instrument. And the reason why I want you to do that is because once you know the top holdings, then you can look to see if the earnings are being released for the top holdings. And those are some key pieces that you want to you know, be aware of because it could affect the movement of that instrument in a way in which you will not be able to trade the strategy and set up that you designed. And we'll go more into detail on that on tomorrow with technical analysis. But for right now, let's just dive into these, you know, the fundamentals. So either the S&P, you know, the S&P is the top 500. 
NASDAQ top 100 stocks and the Russell is 2000. So find the holdings of, choose one of these and find the top five. Let's see who's gonna find the information first. Okay, how are we doing over there? <laughs> uh, trying to figure out how to sort it from highest <laughs> to lowest to the top five, so. Okay, if you click on market cap, Oh, okay, you did show us that. So market cap, okay, market cap. And that's in nasdaq.com, okay. Go back to that. Once you've done this a few times, it takes all of four to five minutes to, um, you know, check your fundamentals each day prior to trading and you're on your way. It's not a long extended process. It's just that, you know, it takes some getting used to, it may take you a month or definitely it shouldn't it'll probably take less than a month, but I'll just say a month to get into the swing of things to get into your routine because it's definitely something that you want to uh, get into the habit of doing. Don't just log into your charts and start trading, not being aware of your surroundings and being aware of earnings as well as being aware of news announcements that could affect the market at the time in which you are trading. Okay. 
Okay, they are beginning to come in. Let's see. Amazon, Google, Costco, Broadcom, and Tesla. Did anyone else find theirs? Good job, good job, good job. We'll give it about 30 more seconds to see if others are able to find their top five. Are there any questions on finding them? Uh, is it is anyone finding it difficult or? You can just Google. Yes. Totally lost. OK. So tell me, which one did you choose? We'll go back. Let's go back to the Okay, so let's go back to look at the margins. Which one did you choose? Let's say, for instance, we chose uh, the Rus the Russell. <clears throat> what you oh, you chose the ES. All right. So what you can do, you know, that's the S and P, right? So you chose the S and P five hundred. And if you went to Google and you typed in S&P 500, okay, let's see. The holdings or S&P stocks Either one of those would give you what's included in, in, in whichever one you chose. So for everyone else who didn't find their top holdings, just Google your, um, the one that you chose. So we'll take about two more minutes on this. Like, like I did, I chose NASDAQ. So on nasdaq.com, they gave me my holdings. Let's see. I don't think, no, there is no. I don't know what your site would be by heart because that's not S&P future holdings. Let's see which one. Just like it would be the best site. Fixed margins, quote, volume times, insights, central market, flexibility. Let's find a minute, SMP settlement, volume, specs, margins, basically. Even on oh, uh, Investopedia, Wikipedia. So even Wikipedia has a you know, list of S and P five hundred companies and. The symbols you can do it in alphabetical order. 
It tells when they are founded. So it doesn't have to be a specific site that you find them on, but these are the ones for the S&P. Okay, Marissa found hers. Good, good, good. So Giselle, does this help? Yes, it does. Okay, awesome. Got it, got it, got it. So once you'll find that you may like one site better than another site, another website, but you'll find your favorite sites once you start trading. Um, I, you know, switch sites a couple of times based on ease of use. If it's easy for me to use and easy for me to find my information, then I, I stick with those sites. That's why I stick with the nasdaq.com because you know, it's clean looking sites. The information is presented in an organized manner. So those are the ones that I stick with, but you can Google it like uh, stocks included in NASDAQ, stocks included in S&P. And uh, there will be several sites which contain it. Then you'll, you'll find and go with the one that, that you prefer. That's it. Okay, thank you. you and Tisa, are... on nasdaq.com, can you scroll to the top so I can see what um, what page you're on? Okay, sure. Quotes. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right, so we will keep it, keep it moving. Good job, everybody. Thank you for participating in that activity. Now, do you have any questions? Does anyone have any questions other than how much to deposit into your account? Any questions other than- I have one more, I have one more question, Marissa, here again. Um, trying to download the journal and it's saying that I don't have authorization to view the page. Okay, I can check on that. Let's see. Any other questions why, while I am checking on the journal? Yeah, this is Giselle. I don't think I'm part of the challenge group. Is that on Facebook? Yes. Okay. Like I can view it, but I can't um, download it. Hmm. And you, and you, Okay, and it will not allow you allow you to print either. No. No. Let's see. Okay, try that and see if it works for you. If you, it doesn't give you the opportunity to download. It doesn't include it up there. At the top the option to print in or download. Okay, now I think I'm able to now. Yes, I'm able to now, thanks. Okay, great, 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 good, good, good. Anyone else, any other questions? Okay, I am having issues logging into Ninja Trader. Do me a favor, um, contact Ninja Trader directly. There could possibly be um, something that you, I don't know, there may have been an error that you downloaded, but contact them directly with that. Any of the, you know, the technical stuff with Ninja Trader itself, contact them. You'll find that their help desk is, they are so on top of it. You can even email them through the platform itself. And they always, for me, they have always responded within the hour, you know, less than an hour, you can also call them. So any technical difficulty with the website, uh, with Ninja Trader, contact them. If it's anything with the trading, then um, I'll, I'll help you with that. So we'll allow Ninja Trader to do the excellent job that they do with the technical support. Let's see, just sell you uh, the Facebook group. Let's see, just a moment. Get that for you.
Okay, I am placing the link for the challenge group in the chat box so that everyone has it and then you can go in there where the resources are located. I will share what the, this is what the challenge group looks like. Uh, this link, it's to hold the resources, the link for the journal itself and other information in there. Please post any you know, additional questions that you come up with after we log off. You can post them in the group. I will definitely check it. Let's see. Any other questions that you can think of right now while we are here? Okay, going once, going twice, no more questions. Okay, homework, 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 homework. I want you to start, you know, just go ahead and start channeling, focusing, getting into the mindset of you are actually going to do this. Um, commit to yourself that you are going to do this. So these are the things that I want you to do tonight. I want you to one, decide the best time of day for you to study and trade each day for one to two hours. I'm sharing this with you up front because if you don't feel that you can devote this minimum amount of time on a daily basis, I will share with you, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Just don't, don't bother. If you cannot devote one hour per day, don't waste your time, don't waste your money. Okay, so the next thing I want you to do is to check to see if there are any announcements scheduled during that time for May 3rd, 4th, and 5th. If you decide that you are going to trade uh, hypothetically 4.30 p.m. to 6.30, no, 4.30 no, not, you, you're definitely not going to trade at 4.30 from 4.30 to 5, 6.30 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. each evening because you work during the day, you get off at 5, you get off at 5, and you, you, you get home, grab something to eat, and then you trade 6.30 to 8.30. I want you to check uh, the announcements. I gave you several sites, investing.com and CME Group check for May 3rd, May 4th, or May 5th to see if there are any announcements taking place during that time. The next thing I want you to do, I want you to watch either a live chart or one of the replay charts of any choice, any of the charts for 10 consecutive minutes. And I want you to pay attention to the movement of the candles. And then I want you to explain in three sentences, patterns that you notice. So you have a few things to do tonight. It should take you less than uh, 20 minutes to complete all of it in its totality. So you're deciding on the time that works for you to study and or trade each day. You're checking to see if there are any announcements scheduled during that time for May 3rd, May 4th, and May 5th. You're going to watch your live charts or replay charts, either one, it doesn't matter which one, but preferably the um, product that you are, that you chosen that you are going to trade. Watch it for 10 minutes. I want you to check for patterns that you notice uh, with the candles. What do the candles do? And I want you to be prepared to discuss this on tomorrow when we dive into day three technical analysis. Okay, so we are moving this bus full speed ahead, full speed ahead. Any questions on the homework? Any questions on the homework? Yeah, Kanchisa, I had a question. To watch a live or replay of a chart, where do we go? Did you download Ninja Trader? I did. So we just go back into the control center. Mm -hmm. Control center. Okay. Yes. 
go to the control center and as a matter of fact, hang on one moment. Let me share. Okay. Okay, this is your control center. Can, are you able to see it on my screen? Yes. You click connections, then choose a connection. And that's how you will, um, if you ha have um, NinjaTrader Continuum, preferably, but if you do not have that, then you, you will use the, the playback connection. That's the connection you know, for previous day's data but it's more than plenty. It allows you to practice. All you want is a moving chart to practice on. And for the purpose of this activity, I just want, just want a moving chart to you know, watch the movements of the candles for 10 minutes. And for those of you who are having difficulty with your, uh, your, your software, this help button here, email support, they are, my son, sorry about that. They, um, they respond very quickly and or you can you know, give them a call. Either way, their support team is top tier, top notch. So that's how you will uh, do your 10 minutes of screen time, uh, training. Right, let me go back to the <clears throat> Okay, so any other questions? Any other questions? Anyone? Going once, going twice. All right. So with that said, Everyone, I know I held you over. I stole my time back from yesterday. <laughs> so if there aren't any other questions, everyone, then have a one. You are, you are so welcome, Marissa. You're, you're so welcome. Uh, have an amazing evening tomorrow. Be ready, be ready, be ready. We are diving in tomorrow. We are going full speed ahead, full speed ahead. And thank you so much for, you know, uh, taking advantage of this opportunity, um, investing in yourself to learn this skill, you will find that you it's going to pay you handsomely. You too, Giselle, you too have a wonderful evening. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, everyone. Have a good evening. You too. Have a blessed evening. See you tomorrow.